What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. We are back here today on NBA 2K23 and today we're going to be doing a Detroit Pistons realistic rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like in this one. Of course, subscribe if new to the channel. As always, greatly appreciate it as we are on the road to 30,000 subscribers. Uh, I want to apologize for no uploads on Saturday. I was moving as you guys can tell. We're in an entirely different house. So that is kind of why I was not able to upload Saturday, but we are back. We are settled in. Still more work to be done, but that's okay. We are at a point where we can bring back videos here. So, taking a look at the Pistons roster, we all know how exciting this team is going to be this season. Cade Cunningham, Sadiq Bay, they drafted Jaden Ivey. They also have uh, Jalen Duran all the way down here. So, I'm excited to see what I can do with this Pistons roster today. Marvin Bagley, Isaiah Stewart. There's a lot to like about this Pistons roster, and they're definitely going to be a team I'm going to try to watch on League Pass quite a bit. So, very, very excited about that. If we take a look at the rotation as it sits currently... That is a funky rotation, if you ask me. I want to start Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham together right away. I'm assuming they have Cade Cunningham unless a shooting guard or something. Yeah, let's move him to point guard. He does go down, but I'm going to move Cade Cunningham to point guard. And then we're going to have Jaden Ivey, uh, you know, back him up at the shooting guard. Or, you know, start next to him, not back him up, I should say. Cade Cunningham, Jaden Ivey, Sadiq Bay, Marvin Bagley, Isaiah Stewart, Alec Burks, Hamdi Diallo, Kelly Olenek, and Noah as well. So that is your rotation right now. But unfortunately, I actually want to get... Jalen Duran minutes right away. I just don't really see the point of not having him play. So, I mean, I guess I'm going to bench Kelly Olenek. Not that I really want to, but I really want Jalen Duran to play right away and uh, progress as much as possible because I want to see if he can become my starting center later in the video. I think we definitely should move Alec Burks and Noah as well at the trade deadline. I think those are two guys that a lot of win now teams could definitely use off their bench. Uh, so that's something the that Detroit Pistons can hang their hat on at the trade deadline. So we could definitely look into that. Maybe even... Kelly Olenek is someone as well we could trade away. But for now, we're going to simulate this season as is. We're going to see how this goes. But I probably plan on stopping the trade deadline, at least getting a couple of second round picks or first round picks for Noel and Burks, because I really do think that's something Detroit will look at in real life as well. So as promised, we are at the trade deadline right now. We're currently 16 and 41. So not a good team at all. But if you take a look at the player stats, at least for now, Jaden Ivey is averaging 17, which is great to see. Sadiq Bay averaging 15. Love to see that. Jalen Duran off the bench, 11 and 5. Love that. But like I said, I want to go ahead and trade Noel and Burks if possible to free up some minutes for these other young guys and give Duran like a full backup role. Not have to worry about Noel taking some of his minutes away. So Noel is well. Going to start with him. He's got a team option next year. So this is kind of a contract I think a lot of contending teams would love. I'm looking to get a first or a second for him. So the Grizzlies are off me a first round pick. The Grizzlies could definitely maybe use another center uh, in their rotation. Well, I mean, they have Clark and... Xavier Tillman. I guess I don't see Adams as a starting center. Maybe we do that trade. The Raptors definitely could use a center. I guess if we got a second round pick. That could be fine as well. I don't know if Noah's well is worth a first round pick. I don't mind this trade because we do get a second. I think Ra the Toronto Raptors could definitely use a guy like Noah's well. But for me, I think there is an argument to be made that maybe Noah's well would be worth the first and the Grizzlies get him to be part of the rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and trade Noel over to the Memphis Grizzlies for a protected first round pick in the future. Grizzlies get themselves a contending piece uh, to help them out. And then we're going to go ahead and throw also Alec Burks in there as well, just because there's really no need to need him as well. So let's get him somewhere else and let's see what we can get. So we get a first round pick from Cleveland, but they're giving Karis LeVert. I don't really see them doing something like that. We can get Noah as well right back. Uh, not going to do that though. Let's see what else we got. Any second rounders or first rounders? We got Joe Harris in a second. Uh, I don't mind taking on Joe Harris's contract or we got the Raptors off me a first round pick for Alec Burks and that's just a rotational piece for them and they get rid of Kim Birch who's like one of the only centers they have on the roster but Toronto plays like that and they got the Thunder so I guess I'm going to go ahead and do that too with the Toronto Raptors we get a future first round pick lottery protected they get Alec Burks a rotational piece for them and they get rid of Kim Birch's contract I guess you can say so boom just like that we have traded the two vets away that we wanted to trade and I guess Olenek was another one I kind of wanted to look at just in case. But we could also just keep him for now and then maybe decline his option in the offseason or just, you know, roll with him in the future to be our center in the rotation. But, yeah, like Ross. But, yeah, I think we're going to keep Kelly Olenek. So, just going to keep Kelly Olenek. And now we look at the rotation again. So, it's Kate Cunningham, Jay Nivey. Same thing kind of stays there. Diallo, Kelly Olenek's in the rotation. Birch is in the rotation. But I'm going to throw uh, Duran back over Birch, obviously. We don't really need that. So, and have Duran playing, and then I'm gonna have him getting more minutes of Kelly on Linux, like probably a lot more minutes. I'm do Yalo at 27 is fine with me. And then some people would probably like if Killian Hayes had some minutes, but don't really know where to put him. Saban Lee and Killian Hayes kind of do the same thing for me. And Saban Lee is already kind of a better overall, and I think he's you know around the same age. So it's gonna keep it the way it is. We're gonna simulate this season. We're gonna see how the rest of the season goes. Should be a lottery team. So hopefully maybe we tank for Webb and Yama and get him to add to this core that we already have. 
So we finished the season at 24 and 58. Very, very bad, but that's okay. Like I said, we're going to be a lottery team. We're going to be in the draft lottery. We can look to add another young piece to this roster. So it's really not the biggest deal in the world. So Sadiq Bay, Cade Cunningham, Jay Nivey, all does a thing. Hamdi Diallo with 12 and Jalen Duran with 11. So I'm hoping Duran, I mean, if he's not the starting center of this team, but he's going to be definitely the backup throughout the future. We're definitely going to keep him around. Just kind of depends how he progresses, obviously. But let's make the playoffs. And then we get the biggest moment of our uh, thing here in the offseason being the draft lottery. So obviously not being in the playoffs sucks, but we get the draft lottery, which is also really exciting for us. You know, for our teams that don't make the playoffs, like uh, for me, I was a Blazers fan last year. We did not. So that was the first time in a while I was able to sit down and watch a lottery and be very, very excited about it. Although it didn't go the way I wanted. But regardless, go straight to the draft lottery. And let's go ahead and see where we're going to be at. So projected at number three. I believe uh, that pick should stay with us. But we got Toronto at number 14. Let's see if they stay at 14. So they traded for Alec Burks. Looks like it did not help as they were still out of the playoffs. So we got New Orleans at number 13. Or I, I shouldn't say still, but you know they didn't make the playoffs. So number 13 uh, from the Lakers. The Lakers weren't in the playoffs either. The Thunder at number 12. So far, so good. No jump up. So that is going to be the Clippers pick, I believe. Or maybe it's not. Maybe the Clippers pick is later on. I don't know. Maybe there's a pick swap. Pacers number 11. No. Kings get 11. Does that mean the Pacers? Yep. Nuggets and Pacers have jumped to the top four. So that is not good for us at all. Number 10 is going to go to Washington. So yeah, I'm a little nervous about this pick coming up. Number nine. Uh, yeah, or not this pick coming up, but like later on. We're probably going to be like six or seven. I have a bad feeling about that. So Knicks, number nine. Number eight. Two teams jumped up, man, at number 11. That's crazy. So the Jazz, Magic Leaf Dog in the top four. It's chalked. It's, oh, we did not get a top four pick. Unless if we're like the last. We fell all the way to seven, bro. That is crazy. We fell to seven. That is the worst thing that could possibly could have happened. So we fall to number seven in this draft. I'm super disappointed in that. But you know what? It is what it is. We'll work with it. We're going to keep Dwayne Casey. I'm going to fill this out. And I'll see you guys on draft night to take. Uh, whoever we can get at number seven. So we only have number seven in this draft. So I'm kind of curious to see what's going to be here. I'm going to assume I can maybe get one of the Thompson twins. Let's see. So we have Webb and Yama going number one. Nick Smith going number two to the Nuggets. Scoot goes number three to the Pacers. Derek Lively, Anthony Black, and you got Derek Whitehead, which Derek Whitehead would have been solid. But at number seven, we have both the Thompsons on the board. And I don't know which one's better. So, you know, apologies if I take the wrong one. But... Uh, you got Thompson, and then you got Thompson. So they're pretty much the same thing. I don't know who I had. I believe I've drafted one of them already in the past. I guess we could switch it up and go like Cameron Whitmore. I don't know much about these guys at all. So 20 points per game, and then Thompson, we don't know. I believe both these guys are like doing a different route than college, if I'm not mistaken. Don't they go to like some NBA to NBA elite or something like that? I don't know, man. What am I talking about? Jairus Walker, I guess I could take as well. But I think one of the Thompson twins is who I should be taking. I guess I'll take the one that weighs five pounds more. I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and draft. I believe that was a Sar Thompson. And uh, we're going to welcome him uh, to the team, which was he he was a 76 overall. And then the other one uh, was a 76. So they were the same same overall. So I don't think it really mattered too much. Both 6'7". I'm probably going to play one of them at power forward, I guess. I really don't know what else to do. Uh, but player options got Conan Linux, which I'm just going to decline. And then uh, you got qualifying offers, uh, which I'm not bringing both those guys back, obviously. So free agency time. Don't think we have any important free agents to worry about. Uh, Rodney Magruder, not going to lose sleep over him. So if we look at the roster as is right now, so Cade Cunningham, Saban Lee, which I do like. You have Thompson now, which he could be a backup shooting guard, uh, which is fine with me, I guess. And you got Sadiq Bay, Or like I said, I could just get weird and throw him at like power forward. I don't know uh, if he would be fine with that. He actually does go up. Maybe throw him at small forward instead. He's a 78 overall. He'll back up Sadiq Bay. Maybe throw Sadiq Bay at the four. Sadiq Bay at the four and go small. I don't know. Marvin Bagley at the four right now. Then Isaiah Livers. Isaiah Stewart and Kim Birch and Jalen Duran. So, honestly, not really looking to add too much to this roster as is right now. I do want to have Killian Hayes maybe play a role this year as well. So, if we play Killian Hayes maybe at the two, which actually goes down. What about Saban Lee? They both go down. I guess I can move Saban Lee to the two. Or, no, we'll go with Killian Hayes. So, we'll go Killian Hayes at the two. And hopefully, he can maybe play a role. But if not, we could also sign someone to free and see like Colin Sexton. For whatever reason is here, even though he got a contract from the Jazz. So, I guess 2K have not updated that. You got Kobe White, which that would be interesting to have him come off the bench, but I don't think there's any, any reason. You have like Jalen Noel, so I guess if he didn't run a roll with Killing Hayes, we could sign one of the shooting guards to be like a uh, good timeline fit off the bench, which I kind of want to do, honestly. Uh, power forward and then center. We got quite a bit of options as well, but I think my only uh, intriguing signing is going to be Jalen Noel. I'm going to sign Jalen Noel to be a two-year a two-year guard off the bench for us. I do like him a lot. So at small forward, 
I think our other small forward was like Hamdi Diallo, but we drafted one already. So we're going to grab probably just Jalen Noel and call his free agency good. I want to just kind of roll with the drafted guys for now and just kind of continue to see how that goes. So let's go look at player progression. Let's see how much these guys progress. I don't really know what to expect here. So Jalen Duran and Jay Ivey, we got Zeke Bay up to an 82. Jay Ivey up four, which is great. Jalen Duran is up three or up three. Yeah, so everything is looking good. A lot of these guys are progressing. So I think if we just stay with the, the patience of letting these guys progress. We're going to be in good standing soon. So hopefully it can just continue to be good. You know, tank in the draft or tank in the season, be high in the draft. Or maybe this season we turn it around and we're a playing team, which I think is very, very possible. So let's go look at the rotation and let's see what we should expect this year. The starting five is Cade Cunningham, Jay Knives, Sadiq Bay, Marvin Bagley, Isaiah Stewart. So that really hasn't changed too much. We got Asar Thompson, Jalen Noel, Jalen Durant, and Saban Lee. So I'm really excited about the bench we have. I think this bench can continue to grow just as much as the starters. So I think we're in a pretty good position right now. Killian Hayes not getting any minutes definitely sucks. And I know some people are going to be upset with me for that, but that's okay. Maybe I just don't like him too much and we're just going to have him continue to ride the bench. I don't know what to say. So I'm going to run a balanced system because it looks like that's the best we can run. We're going to simulate season number two with the hopes that maybe we can be a plan team this year. If not, I'm okay with being in the lottery again and just adding another young talent. But I feel like our talent is already here and the progression is just going to keep going our way that I could definitely see this team for sure being a lottery team. This or not a lottery team, a plan team this year or a playoff team. So Hopefully we get one or the other. Be happy with whatever we get here. Let's see what happens. So at the end of the season, Luka Doncic is your MVP. Scoot wins rookie of the year. You got Kevin Love, six man, Joel B defensive player, Garland's most approved, and JB Bickerstaff, coach of the year. As the Cavaliers are really damn good. Brandon Harrison, executive. So all NBA first team got Lamelo, Luka, Giannis. I'm curious if Kate Cunningham made a team. No, he did not. So all defense first team, all defense second team, and then all rookies. Did we get? Uh, we did get. Uh, we did get Thompson. So it's our Thompson did make an all rookie team, which is great. Uh, as far as uh, the playoffs concerned, I believe we might have got a play-in spot, and we did. So, yeah, we got the eighth seed. So, I guess we we would be in the playoffs right now if there was no play-in tournament. So, player stats, I'm actually curious and see. I, I actually want to be the eighth seed if possible because I want to see how well we match up against Cleveland. Because if we can push them to the limit, then maybe we don't do too much this offseason. But if we just get swept, maybe there's a move that needs to be made. Maybe we go the Cleveland-esque route where we have all of our players on rookie contracts right now. That maybe it's time to make a big move and go get a star or something. Uh, that way we can kind of take advantage of all the rookie contracts and not a huge payroll. So get the New York Knicks in round one. So you got to go up against Carson Wall or Cason Wallace, Bronson, RJ, Julius Randall, Mitch Robson, Jeremy Grant is there. We made it quickly and Obi Toppin. So I have nothing to lose here and we do end up winning. So we are facing up against Boston, which is another team. We can kind of test where we're at. So I want to see where we're at. How well do we match up against them and how many games do we get on Boston? So game one, we're down one to zero. So not a great start, but 18, 17, 15. This is first playoff experience, and playoff experience is great. So we did win one, though. We even it up. So you got Jalen Noel, 26. So he's looking like a great bench addition so far, uh, at least in the playoffs. Game three, they're up two to one. Game four, we even it up. So we are pushing the Boston Celtics to the limit, which is awesome. And then game six, no way we beat the Celtics here. Game seven, boys. I don't know. We might be able to do it. We might be able to upset Boston here and go to the second round. And only our second year, which would be kind of crazy, but it is 2K. Anything is possible. Come out firing, but they take the lead, take it back. And now we have a, a pretty close game for the most part, but it looks like Boston is going to seal the deal here. So you know what? We pushed Boston to seven. That is a great sign of things to come for the future. So like I said, I could either go the route of just staying patient and just letting this team progress, or we could get kind of crazy and go a Cleveland-esque route and go trade for it a huge star to add to this team while our payroll is so small, which I kind of want to see which route would be the best. I think I honestly want to check out the idea of trading for somebody. Now, I don't know who it would be. I don't think we have a lottery pick here from some team, but maybe we do. It does not look like it. And I don't even know if we have our own pick this year. And it looks like we do not. It goes to the Thunder, apparently. So we also have the we do have the Grizzlies pick, though, which is number 23. So that could come in handy. So we're either going to, like I said, make a trade and go for something or going to stay patient. So I want to look around the league and see if there's a player I just can't pass up on. I don't even know what position I would aim for, but if there's a disgruntled player somewhere and I could get him right now, we have to look into it. So I took a look around the league and we actually have a few options. So we got the Toronto Raptors who are rebuilding. My favorite one by far, but it'd be just really weird if I did it, is the Phoenix Suns. Imagine getting Devin Booker and pairing him alongside Cade Cunningham, but at the same time, I don't really want to give up on Jaden Ivey and Cade Cunningham, so I'm not going to go that route, but that would be very fun. Devin Booker is someone I'll definitely look at in future rebuilds when it makes sense, but today I don't think it makes a lot of sense. So, not going to do that one. 
The one I actually actually did like a lot, and if I can remember where it was, what team was it on again? Bam on a bio on the Miami Heat. They are selling. They went 25 and 57. So things aren't going well. They lost Tower Hero. So Miami could be looking at a rebuild, even though I think Miami, for the most part, doesn't really choose a rebuild. So yeah, Bam on a bio by far is my favorite piece to go get if we can get them. And then you also have like Michael Porter Jr. Uh, if you are interested in Michael Porter or KCP, we may be able to get them from the Nuggets. So we could get MPJ and play him at the four because right now I don't love my power four uh, situation. So Michael Porter Jr. could be a very solid addition right now. So you know what? We're going to try. We're going to try for Michael Porter Jr. They say we can get him. Uh, I don't have a ton to offer right now, which is why I was going to wait till after the draft. But if he's gettable right now and our payroll is so small that we can take advantage, Denver has not succeeded with him. He's only averaging 13 points per game, which is very interesting to me. So this man, I feel like needs a change of scenery. He needs a change of scenery in the worst way possible. The man is tall. He's like 6'10", is he not? Yeah, so you can play him at power forward and nothing can get away with it. So we can offer a first round pick in this draft. I'll give you Marvin Bagley. And I'll also give you, I don't know if I would love to give you Thompson because I'd love to keep him around if possible. I also would love to keep Jalen in the well. So I will give you another future first from the Toronto Raptors. A lot of protected. So I don't know if this is how much Michael Porter Jr. would cost, but I'm going to offer this up. Maybe the Nuggets are just desperate to get rid of him because he's been bad for them. And we offer this. Do they make this trade? And they do. So Denver says, let's get off his contract. Let's get rid of him. And we'll take him on. And we are the team that's going to revive his career. So I'm going to play him at power forward. He does go down. But him at the four next to Sadiq Bay, I love it. So the team is actually really big as well. Like Sadiq Bay, uh, you know, Kate Cunningham's really tall. Michael Porter's really tall. So very tall team. Jaden Ivey, 6'4", is not bad for a shooting guard. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So we trade our pick in this draft so we don't have any rookie signings. So Michael Porter Jr. was our guy to go get. I don't know why on earth we would ever decline Jalen Duran, but give me Jalen Duran back. And the qualifying offers, we have Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bay, and Isaiah Stewart. So we do need to bring back, uh, I would say, Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bay. Isaiah Stewart, on the other hand, I do like Isaiah Stewart a lot, but uh, I'm, I kind of want a bigger center, honestly, because he's only 6'8". Jalen Duran, how tall is Jalen Duran? He is 6'11". So I just don't... I mean, we can keep Stewart, and maybe Jalen Duran's going to eventually turn in that starter for us, because I do like Stewart off the bench. I just don't know if I love him as a starter. So Kevin Hayes, Kevin Knox, I'm not going to worry about. Saban Lee, I do want him back, probably to be our backup shooting guards, or backup point guard, I should say. So Saban Lee, going to sign him, and then we're going to go ahead and... Get Saban Lee back, and then we're going to wait for these other two guys, which I do want both of them back. So, Sadiq Bey looks like he's going to get a huge payday, and we might have to be the team to pay him. So, we're just going to pay Sadiq Bey, going to sign him, and then as far as Isaiah Stewart is concerned, I'm not going to pay him a lot of money. I'm going to wait and let him come back on his qualifying offers. So, he might be upset with that, but I just don't see the need to pay him a lot of money, and then we don't even like to, uh, you know, we, we're not like fully committed to him, if you get what I'm saying. So, we could sign like a different center as well. We got Claxton out here, but... I'm just going to get Isaiah Stewart back. I think a lot of Pistons fans do like him. So he's going to come back on his qualifying offer. And play progression, moment of truth. We got Kate Cunningham to a 91. Jaden Ivey up to an 85. Michael Porter's an 83. Sneak Bay. We got everyone going up. Jalen Duran. Duran's up two. Isaiah Stewart is an 80. So things are looking good, though. I'm still very happy with that. I love the addition of Michael Porter Jr. I think that's going to elevate us to a whole new level. We almost got out of the first round, and MPJ should only help with that. Maybe not so much on the defensive side of the ball, but offensively he should be another huge threat that defenses have to worry about so that is kind of what i wanted there so taking a look at the rotation for this next season i'm excited to see what this is going to look like and i think we should be a very high seed in the east so if you take a look jay and ivy kate cunningham i said that backwards but you get what i'm saying uh Sieg bay michael porter isaiah stewart still starting Osar thompson jalen duran dylan noel and saban lee so that is going to be our rotation it is a four-star balance i do want to look at shot tendencies is michael porter jr shot tendency just down bad it is, let's see, a 64. So yeah, I would like that to be boosted up a little bit. I feel, I feel like that's a little disrespectful. I'll push up to like an 81. So let's go ahead and simulate this season. Let's see how we do. And hopefully we're a top seed in the East after the Michael Porter Jr. edition and all the player progression around him. So finally, we get a different MVP. That's going to go to Jason Tatum. We got Xavier Booker winning Rook of the Year. So Devin Booker and Xavier Booker out there balling. Love to see that. The Booker brothers or whatever you want to say. Six man of the year, Sabonis goes to uh, Atlanta. Interesting. Bam out about defensive player. Nick Smith Jr. most improved. And Coach of the Year is going to go to, not us, the Thunder get it, 58-24. But the reason why I thought it was going to be me, because we actually also went 58-24. So it looks like we out, you know, played the Cleveland Cavaliers by one game in the regular season. So all be a first team. Kate Cunningham better be here somewhere. And he is not. That's disappointing because Kate Cunningham and the Pistons just had a really damn good year. We are the first seed in the Eastern Conference. So taking a look at the player stats for this season, you had 23 from Kate Cunningham. 
and seven assists. 22 from Jaden Ivey, 18 and a half from Michael Porter Jr. So he got a change of scenery. Not a lot of pressure here in Detroit. And he comes out balling. Jalen Duran is continuing to impress me with 14 and five off the bench. Isaiah Stewart being that bruiser down low, 10, 10, and also a block. So maybe we should like Isaiah Stewart, but both of these guys are making me happy. Jalen Well with nine off the bench, A from Asar Thompson, and then six from Saban Lee. So we are the first in the East. So can we come out here and prove ourselves and win a championship? Year number two, or what is this? Year number four or three? I don't remember. But here we go. First time as a first in the East, we do have to deal with Scoo Henderson, Halliburton, Porzingis, Kuzma. So this is a good Pistons or a Pacers roster. Uh, the Pacers and the Pistons go way back, as we know, back from the Malice at the Palace days, similarly current round, and we are going to beat them in five. So we do get a revenge, and now we get the Boston Celtics. So we pushed this team to seven last year, but our team is much better now. So hopefully we could just beat them. So game one, this is going to be a tough one. We do win 1-0. Game two, 2-0. Two to are we just going to take care of them just like that? Beat them in five? Beat them in six, please? Beat them in seven, please? I hate this game, bro. I hate this game, but whatever. We'll run it back. So the Celtics come back three to zero to beat me and the Thunder going to win the championship. So would have loved to have seen how we matched up against Cleveland. I just felt all the confidence in the world that going up three to zero, we were going to win one of those. And no, we don't. We lose all four of them. So that's this game though. Can't be too surprised, uh, but player progression for another year, keeping the roster intact. I'm not too upset. I think we'll be fine. So draft lottery time. I even have a pick here somewhere from one of the trades we made, but I don't think so. It doesn't look like it. So we do end up having the 29th pick. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm honestly just ready to simulate one more season and just run it back again. I think progression should be well on our side and things are just going to look absolutely, absolutely great. So I'm going to fill this out and then I'll show you, uh, you know, the free agency signings and then we will go into progression and be a very happy team. So the only free agent we need to worry about, of course, is Cade Cunningham, which obviously we're bringing him back. There's no question, no doubt. We're bringing Cade Cunningham back. And I think Jalen Noel is also somebody I would love to have back. And then Stewart's also free agent this offseason. So, oh, okay, it's going to be interesting. But I do want Jalen Noel back. Well, that's Mitchell. But I want Noel back uh, if I can get him back as well. I'm pretty sure he's going to be out here now. And he's played great for us. So I'm going to bring him back on a three-year deal. Uh, that means I need to renounce Cade Cunningham, apparently, which that is not going to happen. You are insane, 2K. Uh, so we're going to, Kate Cunningham is finally getting an offer from the Lakers. Of course, we're not going to let that happen. So Kate Cunningham and Noel are both back, which is awesome. So bring both of them back. And then Isaiah Stewart, I guess we're going to just finally give him his payday. And we are going to be a very, very expensive luxury tax team now. But that's what happens when you have a bunch of young players. And I'm going to pay for them. So full rotation still is the same, honestly. Uh, so we're just going to run it back again. So let's go straight to player progression. We were literally the first seed last year. Almost won 60 games in regular season. So I think we're just... Another year progression. Hopefully, this is the, you know, we get it done. So, Jalen Duran up to an 80. You got 83, 84. Michael Porter Jr. did not move, which is a little disappointing, but Jaden Ivey's up to an 88. So, we're going to run it back. This is our last chance running it back. We got eliminated in the second round, blew a 3 to 0 lead. Let's not let that happen again. Let's go bring a championship to Detroit. So, we ran it back another year, and this time we're only the fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. So, that's a little disappointing, not going to lie, after being the first seed, but. Jaden Ivey actually leapfrogged Cade Cunningham as far as averaging and leading the points per, you know, points uh total. So we got 23, 21, 20, or 19, 15, and then 14. So if we don't get it done this year, I don't know if it's going to be possible in a championship. So we are just going to shrink, you know, we're going to shrink down to an eight-man rotation. I want my eight best players playing, and I want to go win a championship for Detroit. So we get Chicago in round one who have Lonzo, Zach Levine, Brooks, Smith, Will Aaron Gomez. So honestly, my center should eat. I don't really have any... I'm not scared of William Hernan Gomez whatsoever. So 1-0 lead. They even it up. Uh, we're up 2-1, though. Can we go up 3-1? Yes, we can beat them in 5. Come on, baby. We beat them in 6, though. No, we beat... <sighs> Bro. We're going to a Game 7 early on in Chicago. I honestly thought we should have won a championship last year, but here we are this time around, and now we get Chicago Game 7. If we lose this one, I don't know what I'm going to do. So please come out here and beat Chicago they're going to hang on to the lead, it looks like. And it looks like we we're going to lose. So I thought I was only going to run it back one more year. But we lose here again. I'm so upset with that. Kid Cunningham 24 and 11. But I don't want to end it off there, man. I don't want to, I don't want to end it off on just a elimination in round one. So we got to run it back again, which is unfortunate. I thought for sure we had a championship this year and we did not. So let's go straight to the lottery. Might even have a pick here somehow. Doesn't look like it, which is fine. So let's just go straight into more progression. Just more patience. I guess we get a different head coach then, maybe. Maybe that's our problem. Let's get a different head coach. Move on from Dwayne Casey. See if there's another good option here. Maybe there's another 
Uh, Rick Carlisle's here. Steve Kerr is here. So if I can get Steve Kerr and offer him a, an offer and then I'm going to offer Rick Carlisle a contract as well. Because I believe Rick Carlisle, didn't he used to coach the Pistons like a long time ago? If I'm not mistaken. Where's the other head coach? Uh, where's Rick Carlisle? Did I, did I pass him? Chris Finch is also here. I want Steve Kerr. If I can get Steve Kerr back, that'd be great. I don't even see Carlisle anymore. And Steve Kerr is not going to accept. Unfortunate. So no Steve Kerr for me. I'm going to just get a different head coach. We're going to keep the roster the same. We're going to end back. We're running it back one more year. And that's all there is to it. All right, boys. So we hired Monty Williams to be our brand new head coach here in Detroit. So that's going to be Dwayne Casey's replacement. The starting five is really the same. Uh, you know, Sar Thompson got up to an 86, Jalen Duran 82, Jalen Noel, and then Saban Lee. So this is all pretty much the same. We've kind of been just running it back each and every year. Proficiency is a four and a half balance. So this is the last season, regardless of what happens. We get eliminated round one, then I guess it's GG's. It is what it is. So going to submit this last and final season in the year of 2026, 2027. If we don't win it this year. Then like I said, we do not win one, but hopefully we do win. Uh, we went from the first seed to the fifth seed. So hopefully this year we can get back to being like a first seed again. So at the end of the season, Cade Cunningham wins MVP here in Detroit. So he finally gets his recognition. Uh, we went like 68 and 14, which is probably a huge reason why that is the case. So with Monty Williams coming over, things went great. Yeah, 68 and 14. So Monty Williams comes over and makes us a fantastic team. So if we lose in the playoffs, then like I said, man, it is what it is. It just was not meant to be today. But we are back on top as the first seed in the Eastern Conference. Player stats wise, Jay Nivey and Cade Cunningham, best backcourt in the NBA right now, 18 points. And you got 17 from Jalen Duran and then 12 and a half Sadiq Bay. So the team, like I said, we kept it the same for the most part. We're here to win a championship and it is what it is. And we also have Bo Cruz on our side as well, which is just all more phenomenal for us. We get Chicago in round one. They beat us last year, but I'm confident we're going to beat them this year. So we do beat them in five, which is great. And now we get the Orlando Magic again. I have nothing to lose. If we lose, it is what it is. We get Paula Boncaro and Webb and Yama. You got Josh Hart. And Colin Sexton. So a pretty solid bench and a very solid front court. You got Ty Tail Washington, James Book Knight as well. I think we're better than this team. So many current round and they push us to seven. So barely skate by the Orlando Magic. But now we get the Knicks to end things off. So we're gonna have to deal with the Cavaliers today, which is cool. The so Cleveland's got Wallace. We got or Knicks, I should say. They got Jalen Green and Wallace. So somehow the Rockets let uh Jalen Green go. And then DeAndre Ayton somehow is also in the Knicks, which is wild, but Pretty solid team in New York. So I honestly would not be surprised at all if we lost to this team. Game one, we're down one to zero. We even it up though. Game three, up two to one. Game four. All right, game five is going to be a big one. I'm going to go to an eight-man rotation. And we are going to assimilate game five with... Uh, actually, no. You know, we're, we're going to assimilate game five with SimCast. They come out firing. It is in Detroit. And it's not looking good for us, boys. I think we might end up losing this one. So not great. So we're going to lose game five at home and this is going to be all there is to it. So if we don't win this one, we go home. But if we can win two in a row, we're in the finals. Come on, lock it in, Cade Cunningham. Jaden Ivey and Cunningham, I need you guys to just go absolutely nuclear. So far, the Knicks kind of have a stranglehold, it looks like, and they are going to eliminate, uh, eliminate us in the Eastern Conference Finals. And that will be all she wrote for me today, boys. So I did everything I possibly could to put this team and a chance to win the championship, but the Knicks come out here with a interesting squad and they're going to go on to win the championship. So I'm going to end it there, boys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, but like I said, the uploads are back. Uh, apologize for no upload Saturday. Felt pretty good about the team we put together today, but unfortunately it just did not go anywhere. So I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Crushables. Be back tomorrow. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.